some things are better locked away. Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. I'm your host Emily and today we're counting down our list of the top 10 haunted paintings that are locked away in the Smithsonian. Now for those of you who don't know what the Smithsonian is, it's a group of museums and education and research centers. Now let's get into the video. Number 10, Memorial. Memorial is the name of this painting by Benton Spruance made in 1951. Now just looking at it makes me feel like it's haunted, I don't need any backstory here. The painting is of heads, skulls, and creepy masks on what appears to be a stake in the ground, and there's a cross in the background. It's just unsettling, and one of those faces has black eyes and only two teeth, and I do not like it. Benton was known for for making creepy work, so it's not shocking that he came up with this. A number of guests and staff believe that this painting is haunted, and I believe them. Looking at the painting gives people an uneasy feeling, and apparently there was a cold spot on the painting, which was strange because it was never near a vent or window that could cause a breeze. The painting was a gift from John B. Turner, and I suspect that he knew it was haunted and wanted to get rid of it. Number 9, Scarab. Rumor has it that the Smithsonian is home to many ancient Egypt treasures and artifacts. Now, were they stolen? That's a completely different story, but it's said that these items are cursed. With all those movies about Egyptian curses, this really doesn't surprise me. They have a scarab believed to be from King Tut. If you don't know what a scarab was like me, they were popular amulets and impression seals in ancient Egypt. There are many of them, and through their inscriptions and typology, they are an important source of information for archaeologists and historians of the ancient world. Now, it's said that bad luck will follow anyone who touches King Tut's body or anything in his tomb, and since this belonged to him, I'd say watch out. In 1922, when King Tut's tomb itself was unearthed after more than 3,000 years of uninterrupted rest, some believe the pharaoh unleashed a powerful curse of death and destruction upon all who dared to disturb his eternal slumber. So since this scarab belonged to him, it's believed to actually be cursed from King Tut himself, so I'd stay away. Number 8. Mummified Cat Head Yep, you heard that right, a mummified cat head. Only the head though, we don't know where the rest of the body is. It's a cat from 332 to 30 BC, it's wrapped in linen, and the ears are elaborately painted and modeled on the face of this cat mummy to give it the look of a real cat. The head contains a cat skull, and it was originally part of a complete cat mummy. Many workers have claimed to have seen a cat apparition move around this display. It's also seen around the halls and other exhibits as well. Now it's probably just trying to find the rest of its body and doesn't mean any harm, but I feel like having a ghost cat though would be fun. Number 7. The Weeping Woman the Weeping Woman, aka La Llorona, is a legend that has a wide variety of details and versions. In a typical version of the legend, a beautiful woman named Maria marries a rich man to whom she bears two children with. One day, Maria sees her husband with another woman, and in a fit of blind wage, she drowns their offspring in a river, which she immediately regrets. Unable to save them and consumed by guilt, she drowns herself as well, but is unable to enter the afterlife, forced to be in purgatory and roam this earth until she finds her offspring. The legend of La Llorona is deeply rooted in Mexican popular culture. It's said that if you hear her cries being distant, it means she's close, and if they seem close, that she's far. She usually has a loud cry, kind of like a coyote or owl. Now, the Smithsonian has this terrifying weeping woman doll, which currently isn't on display anymore, and you know, I wonder why. Apparently, it was freaking out too many guests out, and just by looking at it, I can see why. It's also been reported that staff have heard sounds of weeping coming from the doll at night. Some people believe that the weeping lady is trapped in that doll, and all I gotta say is that doll is in the wrong museum, it needs to go join Annabelle and other cursed objects in Ed and Lorraine Warren's museum. Number 6. The Creeping Doll the Creeping Doll, which is a creepy doll, is a prototype for a doll that could crawl on its own. It was invented in 1871 by George P. Clark. The goal of the doll was to make it crawl exactly like human babies do. 
The doll's arm, legs, and heads were all made of plaster and were painted. They were then attached to a brass clockwork body and moved along with the gears. To be honest, it looks like that creepy robotic baby like the one in Toy Story Sid has. Does anyone else see the resemblance? Now, with this just being creepy already, it gets even creepier. Staff have seen this doll creep forward on its own, and others have heard the sounds of children laughing and crying near it. Although I think what's truly haunting about this is how many times I've said the word creepy. Number 5. Mary Todd Lincoln's Dress Mary Todd Lincoln served as the First Lady of the United States from 1861 until the death of her husband, President Abraham Lincoln, in 1865. Mary Todd married Abraham Lincoln on November 4, 1842 at her sister Elizabeth's home in Springfield, Illinois. She absolutely loved her husband and was completely distraught when he passed away. She was in mourning for a long time and stayed in widow's clothes up until her own death. Due to this, she never wore any of her other dresses. She had a beautiful purple dress lined with lace and she gave this dress plus others to her family members. The purple dress was given to her cousin, Elizabeth Todd Grimsley. In 1916, Elizabeth's son sold the dress to the Smithsonian, where it is today. It was to be a part of the First Lady's collection. Now, it's said though that this isn't any ordinary dress. Oh no, it is said that the dress is haunted by Mary Todd herself. People have heard weeping when they have been near this dress, which is just sad. There have also been times where people have claimed to see Mary Todd's apparition standing beside the dress. She means no harm, I guess she's just there to mourn, but that would be a sad and creepy sight. Number 4. The Hope Diamond the Hope Diamond is gorgeous. It's 45.52 carats, it's a dark grayish blue, and the pendant surrounding the Hope Diamond contains 16 white diamonds. The necklace chain it's on also contains 45 white diamonds. Now, French monarchs and heiress and at least one unlucky postman have met misfortune after possessing it. The Hope Diamond's allegedly cursed reputation is well known. The diamond gets its name from the London banker Henry T. Hope, who purchased it in 1839. After Hope's death, the diamond passed through the hands of various owners. In America, the gem was feared to be lost in a shipwreck, but the rumor was refuted when the diamond appeared at a public auction in Paris on June 29, 1909. Evelyn Walsh McLean, a Washington DC socialite and wife of the former owner of the Washington Post, acquired the diamond in 1911 for $180,000. Now she too suffered the curse of the diamond as her husband died in a mental institution, her eldest son died in a car accident, and her daughter took too many sleeping pills. She believed in the curse, but she continued to wear the diamond and would not sell it for fear of bringing bad luck to someone else, which is really considerate if you think about it. After Evelyn's death in 1947, the diamond was found along with 4 million worth of other jewels stored in shoeboxes in her bedroom. Then Henry Harry Winston, a leading American jeweler and gem dealer, bought the diamond from her estate in 1949 and in 1958 he donated the diamond to the Smithsonian Institution where it is today. Number 3. Black Aggie Black Aggie is the name given to a statue formerly placed on the grave of General Felix Angus in Jurid Ridge Cemetery in Pikesville, Maryland. Beginning with its installation in 1926, it was surrounded by many urban legends. These included that the spirits of individuals buried at Jurid Ridge will annually convene at the statue, that no grass would grow on the ground where the statue's shadow would lie during the daytime, and that the statue would animate itself during the night, whether by physically moving or by showing glowing red eyes. Those who see her eyes are said to have their lives ended by her, or she will cause you to go blind. Oh, and one last thing, if you sit on the statue's lap at midnight, you will die in two weeks. So, you know, that's cool. Due to these urban legends, it led to much unwelcomed attention towards the statue. Many people were caught breaking into the cemetery at night to visit it, and the pedestal was frequently vandalized. So in response, the Angus family, disturbed by the attention the statue received, donated it to the Smithsonian in 1967. I know what you're thinking, it's just a statue Emily, it can't hurt me. Well, apparently there are real stories about this statue taking people's lives. One man put a cigarette out on the statue, which is just 
just disrespectful to begin with, and he was later found dead due to him getting pew pewed in the head, if you know what I mean. Another man was found dead at the foot of the statue, and no one knows his cause of death. So if I were you, I'd stay far, far away from Black Aggie. Number 2. Abraham Lincoln's Hat Yes, the Smithsonian has acquired one of Honest Abe's hats, but just not any hat, the one he died in. So of course, if you have an item of clothing that someone died in, I'm sure it's going to be haunted. The last time he put on this hat was to go to Ford's Theatre in April 1865. After he died, his hat and everything from Ford's Theatre was preserved. In 1867, it made its way to the Smithsonian, and it was originally put in the basement and not on display because they thought there was too much excitement at the time and kept it quiet. The Smithsonian didn't even reveal that they had the hat until 1893. It's now one of the Smithsonian's most treasured objects, and obviously, it's haunted by Abe himself. A number of people have seen his apparition around the museum, and does that mean that him and Mary haunt the Smithsonian together? Cause that's a couple goals. And coming in at number one is the founder. Now this isn't any type of art or artifact, but it's said that James Smithson, the founding donor of the Smithsonian Institute, has been spotted wandering the organization's castles, home to its administrative and information headquarters, on numerous occasions. This starts to make a lot of sense when you learn that James's remains have been kept at the museum since 1904. James' frequent appearances were supposedly causing such a ruckus that in 1973, his remains were briefly dug up for investigation. His skeleton was in fact still safely in the coffin though, but there's nothing to say of his spirit. Other motives for him being dug up might have been to search for documents rumored to have been buried with him, but I want to think it's because they actually wanted to make sure that he was dead. He's not the only ghostly worker found wandering around though, as it's said that other former employees' apparitions have been spotted too, which is scary. Well, that's all for our list of the top 10 haunted paintings that are locked away in the Smithsonian. I'm definitely getting some Night at the Museum vibes from this place. Which story creeped you out the most? Let us know in the comments down below, and I mean, while you're down there, why not like and subscribe? I'm your host Emily, and I'll see you next time. Peace.